Happy New Year! Want to learn to use one of these? How to use a slate is one of the main things you need to know as a camera assistant, especially when you're first starting out because you are the clapper loader. So you are the person in charge of that slate and you need to know what information to put on there, when to use it, how to use it, everything about it. You've probably seen them on behind the scenes of different movies and things and you've wondered, gee, there doesn't seem to be much art to that. Well, there is quite a bit of art to that and uh, quite a bit of knowledge behind it as well. So I'm going to teach you. First up, let's discuss what exactly a slate is. A slate is the visual representation that connects vision and audio in post. A lot of the time sound is being recorded separately from the camera and therefore you need to have some sort of connection between them both. So what do you do? You use a slate which is the visual and the audio cue and match those two right up in post so that this vision and that sound can connect together. Pretty simple really. It's also a way to label each shot so it's easier in the editing process to find certain clips and of course keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. All right so let's have a look at the slate itself and what information you have to put on there. So right at the top you'll have the project name. This could be the title of the film, it could be the title of the episode, whatever you need it to be, whatever you want to identify your project as. If you're not too sure about what the project is and it's not your project just go by what it says on the call sheet. I just go by the title of the call sheet and put that on there. Underneath the project name you'll have your roll number which will be A camera, B camera, however many cameras you've got they'll be listed there. In most cases you're probably just going to have one so you'd have A and then the roll number after that so in this case in our example A001. Next to that you'll have the slate number. Now slate number isn't necessarily the scene, in most cases it is but sometimes it can just be a shot number. There are a couple of different ways that you can label your slate, we'll get into those in just a moment and then obviously next to that you'll have take and that is the take number so you've done one run through of everything that's cut and finished you do another run through of everything that's take two take three take four take five you get the point underneath all of that you'll have the director and the camera so camera will be the DP's name director director's name pretty simple and then underneath everything you'll have the date and then next to that you'll also have three things on the slate you'll have day night and also MOS. Day and night signifies when that scene is set and MOS is a bit of a strange one. If you're doing a slate and there's no audio recording you can just have MOS displayed on the slate which signifies that there is no audio attached to that clip. We'll get into that slating technique soon as well. On my little slate printout here as well I've got a little section here. That section I tend to use for any labels for that particular shot so if the shot does require a different frame rate you can put the frame rate in there. If it is of a different color balance compared to everything else and you need to keep track of that you can put that in there. You can put the ND filters or any special filters that you've got in there. You can also put those on little tags or any of these things on the slate on little laminated tags which you can make up yourself with a little bit of velcro and you can pop those on the slate making it easier to switch in and out. But yeah now you get it that's the basic gist of what you need on the board and what it represents and now we can get into different slating techniques. Let's talk about the information on the slate first so let's talk about the slate number. Like I was saying earlier there are a couple of different methods of doing that. You can do it numerically and you can also do it alphabetically. So in America they tend to use the alphabetic system or the alphanumerical system as well so you'll have the scene as the number and then the shot is a letter. So you'll start off with let's say scene 12a and then you'll go scene 12b and then 12c, 12d, 12e and keep going up and then when you do get to the end of the alphabet, if you do get to the end of the alphabet you'll just go again as AA, AB, AC, continue, continue, continue until you're done. And then when you change scenes you'll change the scene number and go back to A. I like that method of doing things and I've adopted that method in most cases. That's what I tend to do on set unless somebody stipulates otherwise or wants something else. It just seems really straightforward though but what I would recommend is you chat to your continuity or chat to the director or the editor or whoever might be involved in that it, depending on the scale of the project there might be a multitude of different people involved who would like to see it differently. Just double check with them that they want it that way or if they want it a specific way instead. In the numerical method you'll just have numbers. So you'll have scene 12 and then shot 1 take 1. 
instead of 12a take one. It doesn't quite roll off the tongue as well, but it still is a valid method. In terms of numbering, you could also number that two different ways. You could use the numbers direct off the shot list. So it could go, let's say scene 12 and we're shooting shot seven first, but then we're gonna shoot shot five and then we're gonna shoot one. That can get a little bit confusing, but I have been on shoots where people have wanted to do that and that's a thing. So if that's a thing in your job, then do it. But then the better way of doing that is just going sequentially. So you can go sequentially by scene and you can also go sequentially by job. So I was working on a feature film and they wanted to go sequentially by the whole film. So let's just say we started with scene 12. So scene 12 shot one, two, three, four, and then scene 10 shot five, six, seven, eight. And we just kept going from there. That way, every single shot had its own number, like own very specific number. And it didn't get confusing. We also got to tally up how many shots we had in the whole film as well. So that was pretty cool. But if you are using the alphanumerical system, I would recommend learning the phonetic alphabet. It is used widely in the industry and people do have their own flair on it as well. But as long as you have a word that represents that letter, it should be fine. But phonetic alphabet is the best one because it's not gonna get mistaken for any other word or any other letter. Okay, so slating techniques, here we go. Let's go basic slating techniques. First up, where do you put the slate in frame? The general rule of thumb is if your lens is a 24 millimeter lens, you'll be going two and a half feet in front of the camera. If you are on a 50 millimeter lens, you'll be going five feet in front of the camera. 80 millimeter, eight feet. 100 millimeter, 10 feet. That is the math that you need to calculate in your head. If you're unsure of what a foot is roughly, have a look at your forearm. That is roughly a foot and it's a good measurement to get a handle on so that you know how far away you have to be in just a moment, instead of having to calculate it really hard in your head. But even if you are that distance away from the camera, how do you know that you are in frame so that the camera operator doesn't have to spin around and find you and mess up their work? Well, simple answer is just have a look at the monitors. Or if you are unable to look at a monitor, just stand directly behind the camera and have a look at where it is pointing. If you stand directly behind the camera and look forward to where it is and you know the focal length, you should know roughly where to stand. Okay, so we know what the information is on a slate. We know how to label the slate. We know where we need to stand, how far away from the camera we need to be. Now, what do we do? So in a normal slating position, you will slate at the head of a take. This is how it usually pans out. So the first AD will say, quiet on set, going for a take. And people will start getting ready to go for the take. Everything will quieten down and you'll be ready in front of the camera with the slate in frame. Then the first AD will call to sound. So they'll say sound, Sound will say speeding. Speeding is your cue to call the take. So all you need to do is don't worry about the roll number. You just need to worry about the slate number and the take. So in our case, 12A take one or 12 alpha take one. But don't mark the slate just yet either. You've got to wait for your okay from the first AC behind the camera to mark the slate. Once sound has rolled and you've called it, they will roll the camera. And then once the camera is rolled and framed up on you and focused on you, they will call out to you that they're ready and then you mark the slate and then just get on out of shot. So yeah, that's as straightforward as it is. That is the best case scenario or the easiest case scenario for slating. But there are a couple of variations to be thrown in the mix that might confuse you a little bit. Let's talk about tail slates first. So if you can't get the slate into frame for the beginning of a shot, let's just say the shot starts in a different room and you can't physically be in that room and you have to slate at the tail end of the shot, you'll do something called a tail slate. So with a tail slate, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just everything happens at the end. So first AD will say quiet on set, going for a take. They'll say sound, sound will say speeding. As soon as they say speeding, you can call what it is you don't need to worry about being in frame, you just need to call it to the boom operator. So you say 12A, take one. And then once you've called it, you get ready in your final position or roughly whereabouts you have to be for your final slate. 
and then you wait. Once the shot is over, you duck in, get that slate as quick as you can in frame. Now, what you can do here is you can have the slate completely upside down, or you can mark it the right way up and then turn it upside down. But the important thing is having it upside down at some point within that. So quickly get the slate in there, mark it, turn it upside down, or have it upside down, mark it, and then turn it the right way up. Don't worry about calling it yet, only after you've marked the slate, then you can call it to the boom. And the way you would do that would be 12 alpha take one tail. That way camera isn't rolling unnecessarily long after the take is finished. They're able to get that sync and sound can continue rolling to pick up your voice just to mark and identify what that track is. So that's a simple tail slate. Things get a lot more confusing when you add more cameras. But first up, I wanna talk about shots that don't actually have sound to them and how you slate those. It's pretty much the same thing. You just don't need to clap the sticks. All you need to do is put your hands over the sticks or put a finger in between the sticks. And of course, make sure that MOS is visible on the slate. This sort of slate is just an identifier. So what you'll need to do is jump in, pop that slate in front of the camera once they've hit record and they've got a snap of that slate you can jump out and that's it you don't need to worry about calling anything you just need to visually represent the slate in frame and then if you're doing it at the tail you'll start upside down and then flip it the right way up okay so we've done easy slates straightforward slates we've done tail slates now let's get into the multi-cam stuff let's just say we have an a and a b camera a and B camera are gonna be called slightly differently. Now let's say that A and B camera can be slated with one slate. So both cameras are focused on a similar position and you can actually get the slate in both shots. What you'll do is you'll find that position where you can see it from both cameras, if possible, and you'll do exactly the same thing. So you'll jump in, you'll make sure underneath roll, you've got the roll number for A and for B, and then you'll call the slate as normal. But when you do mark it, you'll say 12 alpha take one, and then when you get asked to mark it, you will say A and B common mark. But then what if B camera is in a totally different position to A camera, what are you supposed to do then? Firstly, pick the camera that is the easiest to get to. So if you can get to B camera easier than you can get to A camera, do B camera first and then go over to A and slate A. But this time you don't say common, a and B marker, you'll actually just say B marker or A marker, depending on which camera you're starting with. So let's just say you're doing B first, you'll go in, you'll slate for B, you'll call it 12 alpha take one, and then when you're asked to mark, you'll say B marker and then mark it, and then you'll go over to A, and then you'll just say A marker and mark it. Of course, when asked. But let's throw another curveball in the works. Let's just say the B camera is a tail slate, but A camera is a head slate. Now what do you do? As soon as the first AD says quiet on set going for a take, we'll be ready in frame for A camera. We'll call it as per normal. And then when you're about to mark it, you'll say A marker, mark it. And then after you've marked it, you'll yell out to the boom operator, tail on B. And then at the end of the shot, you'll go over, make sure you're in position for B, get that slate done, and then call it out to the boom operator again with A and B. So this is the way it will go. The director will say, cut, you will be ready for B camera. You will mark B camera's tail slate, and then you'll call out to the boom operator, 12 alpha, take one, tail on B, head on A. Seems really confusing, but once you do it a few times, you'll understand. And that's really all there is to slating. It can get really confusing, but once you do it a few times, you'll understand completely and you'll breeze through it. But there are a few more things I do wanna to touch on here. There are a couple of different ways to use the sticks. If you're in a quite confined situation and it is quite a close shot and you need to be quite close to the actor, just make sure you don't clap the sticks too loud. This is called soft sticks. So you will announce it before you do it and you'll say soft sticks and do it quite gently, still enough for sound to be able to pick it up and be able to make sync from it, but just not too brutally that you'll frighten the actor or it will be quite deafening to them. In fact, it's very rare that we actually do whack the sticks that hard. And if you do whack them that hard, it's usually because it's a wide shot and sound can't actually get physically closer to you to pick you up. So yeah, if it's a wide open area and sound can't get close to you, make it a really loud one. Just discuss with them beforehand how loud they want you to be. And then for any confined situations, just make sure you keep it quite quiet. Also another little handy tip, if there are any reflections on the board due to the laminated surface and you can't see the numbers or anything like that, just 
just tilt the board ever so slightly downwards so that the reflections don't actually cast on the numbers. You can also use a slate as a good point of focus. So if the first AC needs a focus point, you can run out and pop the slate next to you or wherever the focus point needs to be and they can focus to that. I've got a semen star on the back here, which is an easy way for a camera assistant to focus to. It's contrasty, so it's easy to pick up on the peaking on a camera, and I can just place that wherever it needs to be, and the AC can easily get their point of focus. Most importantly, the slate's always on me, so I can jump around and do that very quickly. And as you can also see here, I've got a whiteboard marker taped to the back as well. So that makes it easy to find. I'm never gonna lose it. It's always there and I can quickly mark things off on the slate. Another thing I like to do is when a take is complete, I'll put a little finger swipe through the middle of whatever take number we are up to and that will signify that that take is complete and we're up to the next number. There is nothing worse than wiping it out and putting a new number on there and then forgetting if you've actually done that take or not. And then you have to scrub through all the footage and find what number you're up to and that can be quite embarrassing. And there you go, so those are my handy tips for using a slate correctly on set. And I really do hope that you got something out of that. I hope it wasn't too dry for you. This sort of stuff can bore people quite easily, but it is an important thing to know as a camera assistant. So hopefully you learned something today. And if you're not a camera assistant, you still learned something, great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.